Hello, my name is Daryl. Today I wanted to go over the lifespan of a Cornish cross chicken when they're raised on pasture. Let's get to it. This is how my Cornish cross chickens are raised. And this is their lifespan on a typical season from hatch until butcher day. On the first week of life, the chicks are hatched, they're sorted. Uh, I normally buy a straight run. I normally get many more females than males. I'll get 60 to 70% female and 30 to 40% males uh, just because they end up selling the males at a higher price because the males grow bigger uh, a little bit quicker. In my purposes, that's not really a big issue. I like getting some bigger chickens and some more moderately sized chickens. I like having that diversity and options for my customers. After the chicks are hatched, within a few hours, they're sorted and they're sorted by gender, male and female. After the chicks are sorted, they're packaged in cardboard boxes that are perforated for air to go through. The chicks are not given any food or any water. During the last 24 hours that they're in their egg, they absorb the yolk into their abdomen right before hatching. And that yolk gives them enough moisture, enough nutrients, enough liquids, to survive up to 72 hours with no food or water. When they are packaged, they're shipped by the US Postal Service, USPS. To my knowledge, they're the only mailing service that will ship live animals. Wherever you're at in the US, uh, you will receive the chicks within three days of the hatch date. If they were hatched on a Monday, they'll be there by Wednesday, typically. They have to be moved to a prepared brooder space which is warm about 95 degrees fahrenheit and has free access to clean fresh water and the water cannot be too cold otherwise it'll shock their systems and they have to be given access to feed as well after the chicks are one week old the chicks are still very small and very fragile they have been given now grow out or chick starter or broiler or fryer feed uh, 21 percent protein they can eat all they want whenever they want i use heat lamps and it keeps it light in there so they stay active which is especially critical for that first week they need to be up they need to be moving around and chirping they can't be too crowded they can't be too spread out it's a delicate balance that is important to achieve during the second week of life the brooder has to be kept above 90 degrees fahrenheit still and no drafts can be allowed at all. Venting can be allowed and actually is important, but there can't be any draft where the chicks are at. During this week, the bedding has to be kept dry, has to be kept fresh. I'll refresh the bedding by just using a, a rake and just fluffing it up like you fluff your pillow and I'll add some new, I use pine shavings, I'll add some new pine shavings as needed. By now, the chicks know where their water is, they know where their feed is, and that's a very critical part in the development of their lives, that they know where they're at, that it's, it's become more home and less of a strange place, and they're more comfortable and they will begin to grow. Now, after the chicks are two weeks old, this is when they begin to grow in their feathers, and you'll see white feathers start to form during this period, the chick's growth can slow down for up to three days. And this is due to the ex extra energy required to grow those feathers because the feathers are primarily made from protein. And that's why it's critical to have that 20 to 21% protein feed available for them for the first few weeks of life. During this time, I start to limit their feed to 12 hours a day. For the first week and a half or so, they've been allowed to have all the food they want. But now at this point, I will remove the feeder overnight for 12 hours and then put it back in for 12 hours. So during the day, they're allowed to access feed and then during the night, there's no feed available, but there's still water available at all times. If the outdoor temperatures are above about 60, 65 degrees during the day, uh, windows can begin to be open, a little bit of more ventilation can be allowed and slight draftiness can be allowed as long as that breeze is not too cold. 
This is near the end of their third week of life. Then they perhaps will have their feathers grown out enough to keep them okay with a little bit of draftiness. If they're crowding together during the day, it is because they're cold. They will crowd it together at night just instinctively. The brooder should still be kept above 75 to 80 degrees. When the chicks are three weeks old, they should have about half to three quarters of their feathers developed. Still small, but developed and hopefully covering at least half of their body. The 12 hour on, 12 hour off feeding cycle will continue in the brooder. I'll typically increase my brooder space from about half a square foot when they first arrive to around one square foot per chick. Keep the bedding fresh and add to it as needed. Now the heaters in the brooder could be totally turned off during the daytime and maybe even at nighttime as long as temperatures are staying above around 50 degrees at night or above around 60 during the day. It, the chicks should be fine at those temperatures and should be hardened off to go outdoors. After about three, three and a half weeks, the chicks can be moved outdoors to pasture as long as nighttime temperatures do not go below around 50 degrees and that is also contingent upon humidity in my climate it's pretty dry so 50 degrees is is not that bad if it's cool and it's humid that is worse so if, it, if it's humid in your area then i would recommend nighttime temperatures above 55 if the chicks are only around 50 percent covered with feathers if they're totally covered with feathers at this point, then you got a great batch of chicks and they should be good to go. Now after the chicks are four weeks old, they should have all or almost all of their feathers. Even if they're still small, they should all be in place now and have begun growing. If the chicks are still in the brooder, the 12 hour feeding cycle continues. If it's cold still outside and the chicks still need to be in the brooder, the size needs to be increased once again to one and a half to two square foot per chick. This also depends on how drafty it is and it, it, it just depends on your chicks. If they're getting too crowded and they're piling on each other, then they need more space and probably they're cold still. If they're dog piling during the day, they're cold. It's either too cold or too drafty or a combination of both and that can be really accentuated by dampness in the bedding and in the brooder. At this point, all the brooder heaters should be able to be removed with no repercussions. The chicks are probably over two pounds at this point and they're producing enough body heat with the amount they're eating that they can stay warm even if it's relatively cold inside the brooder or outside. If it's above 50 degrees, they should be fine at this point. If nighttime temperatures are consistently above 40 degrees and humidity is not too high at those temperatures, then the chicks can be moved out to the pasture at this point. After the chicks are five weeks old, they've been moved to pasture, they've been moved into their chicken tractor, and been acquainted with their new surroundings. The chickens should have all of their feathers, and the feathers should be growing at this point and covering most of the chicken's skin. As long as the temperatures outside are above freezing, the chickens should be okay in this weather. I typically begin weighing the feed for the chickens uh, because I like to limit their feed. I don't give them the quite the full amount. I'll give them about 85 to 90% of their dietary requirement. And I do this, number one is it slows down their growth just a little bit so that their muscles and their bones are able to develop in conjunction with their weight gain so that they have a lot less issues with their hips and with their legs later on. The second reason is it encourages them to forage. Since I have them on fresh grass and there's plenty of bugs and forage for them, I like for them to go searching a little bit for their food. Now I'm not starving them, I'm just reducing their, their needed food by a little bit. Typically Cornish Cross, on pasture can get 20 to 25 percent of their diet just from the ground from foraging so i'm reducing their the amount i'm feeding them by about 10 to 15 percent so there's still that five to ten percent extra just in case they're not able to forage effectively in the chicken tractor the chickens should be given two square foot per bird some people will do 1.6 to 1.75 square foot per bird but I've found that two square foot per bird works really well, especially if you're letting the chickens grow out to nine or sometimes even 10 weeks. Optionally, feed can be reduced to an 18% protein rather than the 21% chick grower feed. 
Reducing the protein to 18% from 21 has two benefits. Number one, the feed costs less. The protein content of chicken feed is generally the most expensive part. Number two, it helps encourage the chickens to forage more for bugs. If they have slightly less protein in their diet than they're used to, they're gonna be craving anything that has protein in it, like bugs. After six weeks of age, I still measure out the feed by weight, about 0.4 pounds of feed per chicken per day. It's important when chicks are this big, they should be around four or five pounds, that they are given plenty of shade, especially if it's really warm outside. During the middle of the summer, it's especially critical that they have plenty of shade. 75% of the area of the chicken tractors that I use are shaded. This allows chickens plenty of space to cool down without being overcrowded. At this point, I'll also check the chickens twice daily to make sure that their water is always topped off and not getting too warm in the sun. Within a few days of turning seven weeks old, I'll increase the feed a little bit to account for feather loss and new feather growing in. I'll increase their feed to half a pound per day per chicken just for those one or two or three days during this time period. Around now is when you might start considering moving their chicken tractor forward twice on a daily basis, as the chickens now are probably over five pounds live weight and starting to get a little bit tight and producing a lot more manure as they're being given half a pound of food daily. If there are 50 chickens per tractor and at half a pound of feed per chicken per day, that's 25 pounds of manure that's being spread in their approximately 100 square foot pen. I like to move the tr chicken tractors at this point two times daily for that reason. After the chickens are eight weeks old, the feed has been reduced back to around 0.45 pounds of feed per chicken per day as they have shed probably all of their down feathers now. The chicken tractor is still moved twice daily as needed. Now this may not be necessary if you have a good carpet of grass. Where I'm at, the climate is pretty arid, high desert, and the grass is relatively sparse. So sometimes, depending on where I'm at, depending on the patch of ground, if it's about 50% covered with grass, I'll move the tractors twice daily. If the ground is more than 70% covered with grass, as in if you look down at the ground and you can see more than 25% of it is dirt, then you probably need to move them more than once a day. If you look down and all that you see is green grass, then the chickens would probably be just fine being moved once daily. After the chickens are nine weeks old, I will inspect them by picking them up, looking at them, determining whether or not they're ready to be butchered. Typically, I'll butcher them at eight pounds live weight, and that gives me about a six pound average carcass. I'll decide exactly which day they're going to be butchered, whether it's nine weeks in one day, nine weeks in two days, nine weeks in four days. With a little bit of experience, it's easy to tell exactly when chickens will be ready to butcher, even up to four or five weeks in advance. I don't like to plan out exactly when I'm gonna butcher the chickens before I even get the chicks. I'll have a week somewhat set aside so I know that during that week I could pick any one of those days to choose as a processing day. The final day is usually determined by week seven or eight and then confirmed after the chickens are nine weeks old. After the butcher day is determined, the feed must be removed 12 to 18 hours prior to the time of butcher. So if the chickens will be processed at seven in the morning the next day, then the feed needs to be totally removed and run out by 7 p.m. the night before at the latest. The water must still be full, fresh, and clean. On processing day, I'll move the chickens to the processing area in crates that hold 10 to 15 birds each. I put the crates in the shade to ensure that the chickens won't get heat stroke or be heat exhausted. If it's really hot out and the chickens are panting excessively, it's important to either spray them with a, a spray bottle on mist function just with water to help cool them down or to put water in their cages with them so they could remain hydrated and cool. I made up this outline of how I raise my Cornish cross chickens and this will be available as a link below. 
Thank you for watching and have a good day.